And so it is possible that we will not see Trump or Biden on the list. And it won't, this is the thing, this transit, what it does is it kicks up the unexpected. So, you know, it's not, it's not whatever we think it is. It's not that. That's the only thing we know. Like Uranus governs the unpredictable. It also governs the internet. And so we may, we may see, you know, AI or technology being used in new ways. Hello, hello, Heal Squad. Welcome back to another episode. So excited today. We have astrologer Jessica Lanyadu, who has been on the show many times, and we're talking all about what's in store for us in the new year. But first, our quote of the day. New year equals a new life. Decide today who you will become, what you will give, how you will live. That is from Tony Robbins. A new year is upon us, friends. And Jessica is exactly who I wanted to talk to to kind of get the forecast on what could be coming up for us. So she's looked into her crystal ball for us this uh, next two episodes. We did two parts with her. So if you don't know Jessica, she's dedicated her life to helping people navigate the cosmic energies, providing guidance and insights that empower individuals to live their most authentic lives. So we're going to be talking with Jessica about what's coming up this year. Of course, we have an election year upon us. What is in store for us there? But just in general, with tech and AI, there's so many things that we are wondering and worrying about. So we'll talk about that in this first part. Whether you're a seasoned astrologer or enthusiast or just a cosmic curious soul, get ready for an illuminating conversation that'll leave you inspired because she is very inspiring and ready to embrace the magic of the new year. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Jessica. Um, I always love when we get to chat with each other. I feel like last year we chatted at the top of the year and yeah. I don't know. Did you predict civil war at one point? Yeah. Yeah. It was like yeah. October, November, you said civil war. Now I'm realizing that was Israel. It, it probably. And I, I would say yes. And I would also say this is something that like I've talked about with a lot of people I and mean, we're just going into it. Let's just do this. Let's go. Um, Let's just go. So I think that when people hear the term civil war, they think about the last time the United States had a civil war, where a bunch of guys in uniforms and guns went to a field mm -hmm. and they had it out with each other. And that is a form of civil war, but it's not the only form of civil war. And I think when we look at conditions like election denial and the 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 really dramatic way in which things are split in our country at this time. And from my perspective, if things become more violent and progress in a negative way, then we will look back at this time and say, the Civil War began at this time. Now, if things don't get worse, then I'm happy to be wrong about that. But um, it's one of those things where I think Wars happen on a lot of levels and in a lot of different ways. And, you know, the kind of like bang, bang, punch, punch version is one way, but it's actually not the only way. Um, that said, I would like to be wrong about any prediction I make hmm. about violence and conflict for the record. That's my hope. I'd like to be I'd like to be wrong about that. But I do think what we're going to continue to see is. You know, I mean, I don't know if if in Israel they would consider it a civil war. Certainly, I don't think in Ukraine and in Russia they would consider it a civil yeah. war. But, they, you know, these kind of like there's there's like echoes of these themes. Um, It's just a really a, a really. We're living through a really explosive time. And there's a lot of unknowns, which I think has been true throughout 2023 and will continue through 2024 and then it's in 25 and 26 where things really change um in a good so, way <laughs> um i would say in a dramatic way <laughs> and i would also say you know when i was getting ready to like talk to you about the year ahead because you know as an astrologer i talk about the year ahead a lot and um this is my first time for doing that for 2024 of the year um I, you know, I was really thinking like, okay, I can do 
what I always do, which is predict, and I'm happy to do, you know, like look at the astrology and tell you what to expect. We'll do that. But I think the most important thing for me to say is that we are going through so much, you know, we could look at this from a social perspective, a political perspective. We could look at this from a woo perspective, from an astrology perspective, but we are going through so much that is requiring us to make our hearts bigger mm. and to be able to hold nuance and paradox and complexity. And as a society, you know, so certainly on a personal level, but also as a society, our ability to do that will have a massive consequences for what comes in, in the next several years, whether we're talking about political issues, whether we're talking about COVID, which is still a thing, uh, whether we're talking about the climate crisis, you know, there's a million levels on which this can play, but we must expand our hearts. And I think a lot of people can probably really identify with that on a personal level, even. Is that making sense to you? Yeah, of course. I was just having a conversation at a party the other night about how I thought the impending uh, issues AI is going to present, the only solution is going to be us finally uniting as a people against almost like us versus the robots. Yeah. And, and yeah. just like that, actually, that's how I feel is like our only chance, and maybe this common enemy is coming to us for that reason, that that's what could be the only hope for us to unite, and it's to come together in love and love with each other. Yeah. And, and also, I think, you know, the thing about AI in particular, and we have, uh, Pluto has entered into Aquarius, it's back in Capricorn, it's going to kind of be off and on throughout 2024 and then from 2025 uh i'm sorry 2025 yeah the end of 24 through i think it's 2043 um let me just double check that for you because it's kind of yeah 2043 44 pluto is going to be in aquarius and it will have all kinds of implications but one thing that it definitely indicates is this massive transformation around technology, how we use it, how it influences our cultures. And the thing about technology and AI is that if we're going to slow down our use of it, and if like corporations aren't going to make money off of it and all that, it requires that we're patient because machines work faster than people. Like that's a thing. And again, it brings me back to this central thing that, you know, if, if people listening take nothing else, we must cultivate greater emotional intelligence, bigger hearts, because then it's easier to be like, well, I know I can get it quicker and cheaper through AI, but I'm going to invest in humans having jobs and in human connections. And honestly, that's really hard for a lot of people. I mean, it's not always financially viable, but also I think it's just it's not how we process things, mm -hmm. it, you know, in this like world that we live in. Well, everything, and whatever's going to be better, faster, cheaper is where we're going to go. It's like, like even currently in this climate, there are those of us who love to support small businesses and mom and pop shops, but we're so the minority. That's yes. not the majority. So I, I, unfortunately, that's probably going to be the same situation in there. Uh, unfortunately. And when we think about mom and pop shops, are they going to have to use AI and other forms of invasive technologies in order to compete now that big corporations don't even have to pay people anymore yeah. to do what was essential work just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, kind of like polling in the astrology of it, the Pluto, so Pluto has been, okay, I should tell you what Pluto is. Let me, can I, I'm just going to die. So Pluto is this, the slowest moving planet in the Zodiac, and it's the planet that governs generations. So if I want to know if you're really a millennial or Gen X, I'm going to look at where Pluto is in your birth chart. I'm not going to ask you any questions about technology personally. No way. So, yeah. So it's like a really important planet. And um, I mean, I could wax poetic about this planet for a long time, but to keep it present in 2008, it moved into Capricorn, just as we had all these like too big to fail banks failing and the government bailing them out. And that's, this is when Occupy Wall Street began and all these kinds of really important movements where the people were like, 
wait, these hierarchies, these corporations, these governments, they don't protect us. They don't even care about the, us. And then they double down on what they do, right? I mean, that's just one of the many things that happens through from 2008 until now. But Pluto in Capricorn is, you know, the last time it happened was 250 years ago. And it has been a transit that has been having us look on an individual level, as well as a societal level, at the structures that hold us up and whether or not they're sustainable for us. And when Pluto moves into Aquarius, which it did a little bit this year, and then it's going to be for the better part of next year, except for the election, unfortunately. Hmm. We, we can talk about the election if you like. Oh, we will. But, okay, good. Okay. Um, but the, the thing that Pluto and Aquarius will bring up is technology, is the use of technology, the intention of technology, some of the most kind of innovative things that humans do actually hold us back. They actually like keep us from each other. I mean, there's a way that social media makes us more connected than ever and less connected than ever at the same mm -hmm. time. Progress doesn't always progress you in the direction you want. Like it, it, it's complicated. And Pluto in Aquarius is going to really kick up women's rights, which includes trans and gender nonconforming people's rights, because uh, it's really, you know, about, against patriarchy, basically. Um, it's going to kick up rev revolution, really. And so what we never know in advance is whose revolution, mm. you know, is it is it the tech giants revolution or is it the people's revolution? Because those are two very different revolutions with very different outcomes. But I think with what we saw with ChatGPT just recently, I mean, I don't, I'm not an expert in this, but they like ousted, they ousted Sam Altman, and then they, then he got back in. Oh, I just heard about that at the same party. That's so funny. Yeah, I, I feel like it was a good party. Yeah. I feel like I'm like, where am I? I'm not at that party. But yeah, <laughs> that that is really interesting because I mean, we shouldn't get into it here because neither of us are experts in it, and also, you know, who knows where the that topic will go, but. It was supposed to be, ChatGPT was supposed to be something different than it is. It wasn't supposed to be like like um, capitally driven. And that's what it is now. Quickly, very quickly, it became that. And so we're going to see that our systems need to quickly catch up with technology because we don't have like protections as individuals on the internet, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think that that's going to become more complex much quicker because there's already, you know, a, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been invited to like develop an AI clone and to like create services with my clone. Like it, things have happened are happening very quickly. Wow, no one's wanted um, to clone me. I'm feeling really left out here. I mean, don't. It's <laughs> terrible. I think it's terrible. I mean, I, I there's a company that reached out to me and was like, we'd like to clone you. And then you can offer all of these astrology services to people through your clone. You don't have to say or do any work. And people can simply access my clone. And, you know, I wouldn't do that for a number of reasons, but Wait, a lot but, of people will do it. But just let's talk about this for a second. Haven't we always okay. wanted a clone of somebody in our lives or even ourselves? <laughs> like we could just sit back, relax, let the clone yeah. do all the work. Like why yeah. not? Uh, in fact, I've, I've secretly admired everybody making jillions of dollars on OnlyFans. Maybe I would create a clone, make millions on OnlyFans like Bad Baby or whichever one of those girls just bought a house for like 8 million cash. And then it's not really me. So when my dad sees right. all this horrific stuff on the internet, but dad, it's not me. It's my clone. <laughs> it's your, okay. So here's the problem. That clone. I just went down a dark rabbit hole. It's, it's a dark rabbit hole. That's the problem. It's a dark rabbit hole. And also who owns the clone? So they say, well, you own the IP, but we own the clone. Well, where does that change? When does that change? Also, once there's clones of us as individuals, how many clones are there going to be? Who can create the clone? Yeah. Like, what if a clone is made on a porn site? What if a clone is made and it says things you really don't agree with? I mean, yeah. it gets out of control in the blink of an eye. I know. And it's so scary. Well, it's terrifying. And the, the real thing is we don't own the technology. We don't understand the technology. And we don't have any rights around the technology, really very few rights because the technology is developed quicker than legislation. Has. Wait, you just said something that just hit me. We have no rights. And if you really think about it, 
the last, since at least 2001, 9 11, all of our rights have slowly been stripped away. Yep. And maybe this, I just got the chills all the way down my spine when I just said that. Um, what does astrology say about our rights? Because with AI, 100% we're seeing our rights being taken away. Like I was telling my dad yesterday, I said, dad, there's an influencer that a guy made because he was tired of working with influencers. She's already making him 150 grand a year and she's gorgeous. And the, the problem is that people think the problem is our daughters won't be able to live up to these standards. And I'm like, did you grow up with Cindy Crawford? And Helena I mean, Christensen and Naomi yeah. Campbell. What are yeah. we talking about? There's always been beautiful women that you can't attain. But the problem is, is that they can take our likeness off of Instagram or our kids' yeah. likenesses off of Instagram, have them say anything they want. I said, Dad, you won't know that it's not me saying these terrible things. And then yeah. how am I to defend myself in public when someone says, well, that's you saying these horrible things? And I'd be like, no, it's not me. I mean, that is a really good question. And there are already scams where people are being scammed out of money and being mm -hmm. terrified where, you know, now when your phone rings, it's very important to not use your real voice. Yes. Because what scammers are doing is they're taking your voice and they're using AI and then they call a family member later and they say, oh, this person's been kidnapped or this person mm -hmm. has been incarcerated and you need to send money. And they're really compelling yeah, no, right. it's it's really frightening. And I, again, at that party I was at, we were talking about AI. My friend said that every time his phone rings, he answers it with an alternate voice, like a hello I or something too. like that. Yep. Um, I'm not answering those calls anymore. I'm just deleting and blocking because I know if they keep you on long enough, they can find your location. They can do all kinds of things. So I just am like, yeah, it's bad. So it's but bad, is, but I will say. What does astrology say about all of this? Okay. Um, so there's a couple things that it says. Um, the, the first is, so, and I have been kind of like ringing the, the, the alarm bell of this through Pluto in Capricorn, but as Pluto moves into Aquarius, this is when chat GPT came out was when Pluto entered into Aquarius. And like I said, it's, it's a lot of years, you know, it's until 2043. Um, what does and that so, mean? Pluto's in Aquarius until 2043? Yeah. And the oh last time Lord. it was in the sign was 250 years ago. It's a really slow moving planet. So what it does is Pluto transforms. It transforms. If it hits your birth chart, it transforms you. And it and as it moves through the zodiac, it transforms society. And Aquarius is the zodiac sign of humanitarian efforts. Uh, it is the sign of technology. It governs STEM right? And it governs AI. It governs innovation and technology. And it is a zodiac sign that is associated with like humanitarian effort. Yes. However, it's a fixed air sign. And so what this means in more down to earth language is that it can be cold. It can be technological advancements. Like we're thinking about, like, I think it's utilitarianism, right? It's technological advancements that serve the most possible people, but it puts a huge group of people under the boot of that most possible people, right? Like it can be very cold and have uh, unhumane circumstance, like uh, outcomes. And I'll also throw something else in, like your parents or our generation we did not have the internet where we're constantly seeing other people's mm -hmm. lifestyles and comparing ourselves. When I was 19 and I moved to San Francisco to be an astrologer of all things, right? Like that wasn't a thing back then. Um, when I did that, if I had the internet, if I had social media to compare myself to astrologers who'd already made it, to compare myself to people who were born into greater wealth than me, to compare myself to people who are just better at showing up on social media than me, I don't think I would have done what I did. I don't think I'd be where I am. And I think that, that again, you know, the technology supports us in many ways, but it hurts us in many ways. And I think it hurts young people because they are constantly comparing themselves to mm -hmm. other people who either have an easier time or are better at curating an identity online. And I think it's really hard on the mental health in addition to, yeah. you know, it's all these other things face. around the economy. It's more in your face because again, I'm thinking about the fact that we grew up with magazines. I mean, we're looking at all these people having these lush, amazing lives. We had that. 
but yeah. it's it wasn't as in our but face. I, but I think, Maria, they, it, the, the, something about the magazines and the big 40-foot screen, it made them seem so distant mm-hmm. that it was like, okay, we're okay having a king and queen because they're royalty. They're, it's just, they're different. We accept that. But with the new media, we see classmates, uh, you know, we see everyday people just striking gold. And so we, yeah. we're, we're, we're saying to ourselves, oh, that should be me and things like that. For, for me, it comes back to the same with AI <clears throat> is how do we use all these tools responsibly? Don't let them control us. Don't don't try to wear your I know it's hard wear your blinders and don't be looking at other people. What You know, stay in your own lane. But I get where I'm an older person. I'm at a certain age. I, I wouldn't have seen that in my teens or my 20s. So Great I, 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 I 100 percent see what uh, you guys are talking about here. Yeah. It's, I think, kind of connected to all of this. I think that, you know, when we're talking about like the astrology of it, Pluto and Aquarius is going to require that we come together for each other or that we, I guess, become, we intellectualize our problems. We intellectualize society's problems, other people's problems. And when we do that, I think what ends up happening is we lose track of the central issue, which is there is so much human suffering. And each and every one of us, we're talking about 15 year olds, we're talking about 50 year olds, have nonstop 24 hour daily access to human suffering and also like class privilege and success and like a a waistline that is whatever or whatever. Like there's this way that we have to be realistic that humans are not machines and we are not meant to be connected to machines all the time, taking in news all the time. And whether that news is like political news um, or it's like, you know, whatever, like people who look like you, but better or whatever it is, you Mm -hmm. know, like it's, we're not meant to be constantly being shoved information into our brains. And this Pluto in Aquarius transition is going to be really transformational in this regard. I think things will get worse and they'll get better. I think it's going to be that, that kind of like messy thing of change. Right. And my hope is that we have greater legislation to protect us in general, but young people, especially from technology, from like the, the like onslaught of it, because, you know, I mean, I don't know if we're all around the same age. I'm, I'm just about 50 and you know, there used to be channels that kids couldn't watch. Mm-hmm. Like there was like, you know, I yep. mean, there were like blue, blue light shows or whatever they used to be called. Right. Like it was a different world. Now a 10 year old ha- probably knows how to navigate the internet better than I do and has access to more than I do. Um, and I think that this is relevant for people's self-esteem, which is relevant for people's motivation to work mm-hmm. and their sense of hope. And I, if I could just share, I did a reading for somebody on my podcast not long ago, and it was about love. And I was like, well, you know, if you're not really happy, then maybe you just move on. And he was like, yeah. And he was born in 2000. And he was like, yeah, but you know, it's not the same for my generation. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, well, we don't know how much, how long we have. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be stuck. And I don't know how much time we have. And I was just like, it got me in the gut, you know, it's between the political unrest in the world and the climate crisis. I think young people are dealing with really different challenges than we did. Um, Yeah. And, and there is an astrology to it, but also, you know, it seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. Great points, guys. Um, Before we continue, and I do want to go into kind of what you see for our political climate in 2024, because we have an election, I want to share with everybody some of our amazing supporters who help us keep the lights on here. Macy's, of course, being one of them. I don't know, Jessica, if you are a Macy's fan, but I worked there for many years and now it's come full circle which is really nice when that happens. Awesome. Um, so Macy's, one of my favorite things that they offer is a free personal stylist. So the new year is coming. You might have a new job. You might want to be on the hunt for a new partner. You might want a new look. You might want to, you know, something. A personal stylist can help you find 
a, a look if you don't have one. You know, zhuzh your look up and they're totally free. And Macy's, of course, has amazing um, specials and deals on their clothing all the time. I am always so shocked at how much I can buy for <laughs> the price of other places. So you can go to Macy's.com forward slash personal stylist, get a consultation with a personal stylist, help them put together a little um, a little look for you for something coming up, whether it's a, a party, a wedding, anything. Um, and you know, they're pretty great at like mixing and matching too. If you have like one top you buy from them, I'm sure they can help you figure out how to wear it with your existing items in your closet and vice versa. So check them out. And of course you guys know, just thrive is my obsession as well. My gut has, uh, been very grateful to this probiotic. So if you use the promo code heel squad, at the checkout counter, you will get 20% off your first 90 day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic. I threw in the Just Calm. Jessica, funny enough, uh, I had a friend who was very, very depressed. And when I had the founder of Just Thrive on the show, her name is Tina, she explained how the Just Calm helps with the vagus nerve. And I said, you know, I'm going to give this to my friend. And it worked for him. And so wow. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. Like, we all have a lot of anxiety, no matter how much we try. So I tried it. I use it every day. I love it. So I do the combination of the just calm once a day. And then I do the probiotic after every meal. So I do three times a day and my gut went from a basketball to a flat stomach. Again, if you saw me hosting this universe, you will see the living proof. Um, I can't say enough great things about it because it has really changed my game. So don't forget to use the promo code heel squad at the checkout, get your Macy's personal stylist at macy's.com forward slash personal stylist. And now We'll talk some elections. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I wrote that down. I'm, I'm checking it all out. I'm checking it all out. Um, okay. So elections. First of all, I, I'm not going to predict who's going to be president for two reasons. One is, I mean, it's it, no, there's no point of it. You know, there's really no point of it. I think the kind of insane amount of speculation that happens from you know news outlets and stuff like that it's just a distraction right so so i'll say that but there's there's another reason why because in april there's going to be something called a jupiter uranus conjunction it's going to last about a month a little more than that that will be feeling its influence um and what this transit does i just got chills i don't know why makes... <laughs> oh sorry i got chills so i don't know why you that's fair you, you're 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 on you're on point what this transit does is it it triggers the unexpected it triggers the potential for massive change revolution liberation um and there's so many levels upon which this can happen but one thing is that it it does the influence of it, not the exactitude, but the influence of it overlaps with Super Tuesday, March 5th of 2024. Um, and so it is possible that we will not see Trump or Biden on the list. And it won't. This is the thing. This transit, what it does is it kicks up the unexpected. So, you know, it's not it's not whatever we think it is. It's not that. That's the only thing we know. Like Uranus governs the unpredictable. It also governs the internet. And so we may, we may see, you know, AI or technology being used in new ways. It might Can be we get the that... first AI president? I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, what a terrible, terrible idea. But also funny for now. Only funny for now. For may now. it never happen. Yeah. Um, but uh, it might be that we we decide that we're going to tally votes in a new way, or it could be any number of things. It could be that uh, third party candidates take a huge amount of, uh, you know, interest in a different way than we've ever seen in the United States. We have been going through something called the Pluto return of the United States. This is something that happens once every 250 years to each nation. And this is our first because we're a young nation. And this transit can often coincide with the fall of an empire, civil war, with the, the nation itself going through a transformation and we have been going through that for the last two two and a half years and i mean you know what i'm saying right it's been a time where the great american experiment of democracy has been challenged and 
what I, you know, I pulled up the chart for the, the election, the 2024 election, Pluto moves back into um, Capricorn and it's opposite to Mars, which does suggest the risk of um, violence or fighting. So it could be physical violence, it could be verbal violence, you know, but it's it's going to be power struggles. And when I looked at the chart of the United States, I used something called the Sibley chart for anyone who's an astrology nerd like me. Um, we have the planet of Neptune at the bottom of that chart at the ISC, which indicates more like a repeat of the like election denial or the, you know, there's going to be contested results. There's going to be ambiguity. It's going to be the same shit. Pardon my French, but mm -hmm. it's nothing else to call it, um, as we've seen before. And so I, first of all, don't, you know, as a person who who consumes a fair amount of news, I mean, I got my theories. But as an astrologer, I'm like, who knows? Like, it could, it's going to change so much, or it's, it could potentially change so much between now and then that it, I'm not going to waste my, my kind of, too much of my energy on who but it's going to be a bumpy ride building up to the election. And then I think we're going to see more of the same from the last presidential election. I mean, we're still talking about, I mean, certain people are still talking about the election and whether or not it was rigged. Um, and within all of this, again, we return to technology and propaganda and journalism and the importance of protecting journalists at all costs and journalistic integrity at all costs. Do we and have that hope, anymore? I mean, that's a great question. Uh, that's a really great question. And and that's the problem, isn't it? It's like, I, I'm certainly not the person who knows. And this, this period that we're in of 2024 is one in which I am hoping people think about media literacy and they prioritize their own media literacy. All right, friends, we had a really long conversation. So um, we are going to break this up into two parts. Tomorrow, come back, we're going to be chatting all about kind of what's happening for us fiscally and financially this uh, coming year and in the years to come. And all about boundaries, setting spiritual boundaries and all kinds of boundaries. It was a really, really inspiring chat. I hope you'll be back with us tomorrow. In the meantime, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.